Good afternoon. I am Professor Anuradha Jain. Today we will be discussing about monetary policy and it's a very very important you know policy for any government to control the situation of the economy. Now what is monetary policy? The monetary policy is a policy of the Central Bank Reserve Bank of India that relates to the monetary matters of the country. The policy involves measures taken to regulate the supply of money, availability of money and cost of the credit in the economy. This policy also oversees distribution of credit among users as well as the borrowing and lending rates of interest. In a developing country like India, the monetary policy is significant in the promotion of economic growth because monetary policy play a very very prominent role in achieving economic growth of the country because the supply of money play a very very important role to achieve economic growth and the supply of money is controlled by the reserve bank of india or by the central bank of india monetary policy is a set of tools that a nation's central bank has available to promote sustainable economic growth you know by controlling the overall supply of the economy now within monetary policies money that is available to the nation's bank its consumers and its businesses are controlled now reserve bank of india controls and formulate the monetary policy of a country and as per the reserve bank of india act all the nationalized bank and other banks are supposed to follow the rules and regulations framed by the monetary policy or by the central bank of india and this you can see the picture of a headquarter of reserve bank of india which is situated in mumbai in maharashtra now what are the objectives of monetary policy why monetary policy is important and how it achieves its objectives that we will be discussing in this session now while the main objective of monetary policy is economic growth as well as price and exchange rate stability there are other aspects that it can help as well now promotion of savings and investment that is the first you know objective of monetary policy like since the monetary policy controls the rate of interest and inflation within the country it can impact the savings and investment of people a higher rate of interest translates to a greater chance of investment and savings so thereby maintaining a healthy cash flow within the economy so therefore like if rbi wants that people should save more or they should invest more then ac accordingly they change the rate of interest to increase savings they will increase the rate of interest so that people will start saving more they will invest more in the bank and that funds can be utilized for the further investment by the business houses in terms of giving loan by the banks so therefore promotion of savings and investment is one of the objective of the central bank another objective is controlling the imports and exports so by helping industries secure a loan at a reduced rate of interest monetary policy helps export oriented units to substitute imports and increase exports this in turn helps the imp uh, you know improving the condition of the balance of payment now when you see the balance of payment situation of uh, our country then it is always in deficit okay so deficit balance of payment uh, creates a problem for the economy because we have to pay more and we receive less and that will reduce our foreign reserves so in that case rbi can promote okay through monetary policy export oriented uni units so that they can produce more products which are exported to the other countries and also they can promote those industries which are uh, producing import substitution so in that case the imports will also go down so main objective is to control imports and to increase exports of the country and that can be done through various instruments of monetary policy and one of the main instrument is the rate of interest in this case or even the credit facilities can be increased or credits can be given to the you know discounted rate of interest to these export houses or 
to those industries which are producing import substitution. So, controlling the imports and ex increasing export is one of the again important objective of any monetary policy. Then next objective is managing business cycles. So, the two main stages of business cycles are boom and depression. The monetary policy is the greatest tool using which the boom and depression of business cycle can be controlled by managing credits to control the supply of money. The inflation in the market can be controlled by reducing the supply of money. So, on the other hand, when money supply increases, the demand in the economy will also witness a rise. Now, for example, if we are at the phase of depression of the business cycle. So, in that case, we know that, that during a depression, investment goes down, demand goes down, prices are going down, businesses are not profitable. So, in that case, how monetary policy helps to control that situation? They can, you know, reduce the rate of interest, they can provide more loan to the company so that, you know, investment will increase. If investment increases, then people will get income and income increases means that there will be you no know, more demand of the product in the market. And if demand increases, then obviously prices will increase and economy will start growing because with the increase in the prices, profit of the business houses increases. And if profit increases, then obviously the investment will increase, people will get more employment. So, that is how through monetary policy, we manage business cycle and uh, whichever phase we are, monetary policy becomes a very, very helpful tool, you know, in controlling that situation of adverse uh, business cycle situations. Another, uh, you know, objective of monetary policy is regulation of aggregate demand. Now, since the monetary policy can control the demand in an economy, it can be used by monetary authorities to maintain a balance between demand and supply of goods and services. When credit is expanded and the rate of interest is reduced, it allows more people to secure loans for the purchase of goods and services. And this leads to rise in the demand. Now, for example, you know that uh, now today is since banks are giving very easy loans for consumer durables or for purchase of consumer durables, then demand has increased because people, those who do not have that lump sum money at a time with them, they can also afford to buy these goods because easy loans are available. Even sometimes loans are available at 0% rate of interest and that is the reason that demand has increased. Or other uh, way to increase demand is that they may like reduce the rate of interest and with that investment increases. If investment increases, then also people will get employment, they will get income and again money supply increases and the demand increases, the purchasing power of the people increases. Or on the other hand, when the authorities wish to reduce the demand, then they reduce the credit and raise the rate of interest. So, this is how you know, monetary policy regulates the aggregate demand and supply in the economy. Another objective is the generation of employment. Now, as the monetary policy can reduce the interest rate, small and medium enterprises can easily secure loan for business expansion. And this can lead to greater employment opportunities. Even monetary policy can help, you know, people giving them more loans for starting their own businesses, for startups. They can give easy loans with less documentation or with lower rate of interest. So, in that case, they will can start their own business. They can generate employment. More and more people will get employment. Another objective is helping with the development of infrastructure. So, monetary policy allows concessional funding for the development of infrastructure within the country. And you know that infrastructure is the base of for any economy because if you get good infrastructure, then further private investments are always encouraged. They come, they invest money and they can start business where there is like good infrastructure, ro roadways, railways, telecommunication, all these facilities are available, then people can go and invest money there. Now, you can see that in India also there are regional imbalances like some areas are highly developed, some are not developed. So, those which are not developed, if uh, 
we develop infrastructure there, good infrastructure, all facilities, then obviously private investment can be encouraged there. Okay. So, therefore, that also helps in the growth of the economy. So, by developing infrastructure, we can help in the growth rate, increase in the growth rate of the economy, overall growth of the economy. Next objective is allocating more credits for the priority segments. Now, under the monetary policy, you know that additional funds are allocated at lower rates of interest for the development of priority sectors such as small scale industries, agriculture, underdeveloped sections of the society, etc. Next is managing and developing the banking sector. Now, the entire banking industry is managed by the Reserve Bank of India. While RBI aims to make banking facilities available far and wide across the nation, it also instructs other banks using the monetary policy to establish like rural branches wherever necessary for agriculture development. Additionally, the government has also set up regional rural banks and cooperative banks to help you know frames receive farmers receive the financial aid they require in no time. So, that means RBI is the controller of all the banks and you know that under the RBI Act of 1934, all the nationalized banks and other banks are required to follow the guidelines given by the Reserve Bank of India that is the Central Bank of India. So, therefore, developing branches and developing uh, banking sector is also the you know main objective of the reserve bank of india and they may just make ensure they just ensure that easily uh, branches are there and easily availability of uh, all the facilities are given to all the people in the rural areas also and also mainly to the priority sector and that is why you know that you have seen this trend in India that the number of branches have increased in multiple times during last 10 years if you see. Now, you find that in every 1 kilometer area, 1.5 kilometer radius, you find the branch of these banks, nationalized banks. So, this multiple branches which are opened is just to facilitate people and to develop you know banking habits among the people. Now, Next, if you talk about the instruments of monetary policy, like what are the instruments and uh, under the monetary policy, how they control, you know, credit, how do they control the supply of money in the economy, how monetary policy is used to achieve these objectives that we have discussed right now. So, instruments, if you see, then overall, uh, we can divide into two categories on so total instruments. One is quantitative methods and the other is the selective credit control systems. Okay, so, mainly all instruments are divided into two parts. So, if you talk about quantitative, then quantitative means when you directly control the quantity of the money supply in the economy. Okay, so, these are known as the quantitative methods and under quantitative methods, um, the different instruments that we use are open market operation, bank rate, cash reserve ratio, Okay, so or SLR, CRR, so these are the main uh, instruments of quantitative methods, quantitative instruments. Then selective credit control methods is like maybe total money supply is not changed, it may remain same, but the proportion or the you know allocation of funds in different sectors are changed, the proportion is changed into different sectors and the main instruments under Selective credit control is credit rationing, margin requirement, moral suasion, etc. So, the instrument of monetary policy affect the level of aggregate demand through like changing the supply of money in the economy, cost of the money and availability of credit in the economy. So, they are also called as weapons of monetary policy. So, instruments of monetary policy in other words we can call it as a weapons of monetary policy because through these weapons they control you know money supply in the economy or cost of the money supply in the economy so in other words you can say that uh, instruments of monetary policy are of two types quantitative and qualitative and quantitative or general or direct like crr slr open market operation bank rate repo rate reserve reverse repo rate Qualitative means uh, selective or direct okay, change like in the margin uh, requirement or direct action or moral suasion. 
Both methods affect the level of aggregate demand through the supply of money, cost of money and availability of credit. Now of the two types of instrument, the first category like quantitative as I have already told that it include bank rate, open market operation, changing reserve requirement that means CRR, SLR etc. Now if we discuss this in detail, then first if we talk about bank rate policy. Okay, what is bank rate? The bank rate is the minimum lending rate of the central bank at which it rediscount first class bills of exchange and government securities held by the commercial bank. Now when the central bank finds that inflation has been increasing continuously, it raises the bank rate. So borrowing from the central bank becomes costly and commercial bank borrow less money from RBI. Now, while changing the bank rate, also it affects the rate of interest. Why? Because when commercial banks are getting, you know, money from RBI at higher rate, then obviously they will be charging higher rate of interest from the general public. So, it means that increase in the bank rate will automatically lead to increase in the rate of interest. And if rate of interest increases, it means that people will take you know less loan and the savings of the people will increase that means money will go out from the economy it will go to bank in terms of savings so overall money supply in the economy goes down and when overall supply of money goes down that means that the demand of the people for the goods and services will go down because they will have less money in their pocket, less purchasing power. So therefore, the demand goes down. And if demand goes down, that means when you see the interaction of demand and supply, then prices will go down because as comparative to supply, if demand is less, then prices are tends to go down. So therefore, you know, when there is inflation in the economy, then uh, monetary policy increases RBI increases the bank rate just to control the inflation and the reverse action is taken when the situation is you know opposite or when there is deflation in the economy. Next we can talk about like open market operation. Open market operation you know refers to the sale and purchase of securities in the money market by central bank on behalf of the government. Now when price starts rising and there is a need to control the price, the central bank sells securities in the market. Why? Because when central bank sells the securities, it means that money will go out from the economy, people will buy the securities and in return they will pay money to the central bank. So therefore money supply in the economy goes down and the reserve of commercial banks are reduced and they are not in a position to lend more to the business community or general public. So open market operation means in other words you can say is not nothing but the buying and selling of government securities in the market. And this has direct impact because there is less intermediaries, less chain uh, you know in between the supply of money and the action in terms of open market. So it has a direct impact. And therefore, this has uh, this is considered to be the best weapon to control immediately money supply in the economy. Now, further you can say that investment is discouraged and rise in the prices is checked. So, when RBI purchases, you know, uh, RBI sells the securities in the market. So, that means that helps, you know, in checking the prices and contrary like when uh, recessionary forces starts in the economy, the central bank buys the securities because when central bank buys the security, it means that they will be making payment to the public or to the commercial bank and if they make payment that means the supply of money will increase in the economy and purchasing power will increase, people will demand more goods and services that will lead to increase in the investment, employment, income and also demand and that will help again you know in increasing uh, the economic growth of the economy. So this is how you know that um, uh, open market operation works in the economy. Now next instrument in the hands of the central bank is uh, changes in the reserve ratio. 
Now under this method reserve ratios there are two ratios that is CRR and SLR okay, which reduces the increase the idle cash balance of the commercial bank. Now every bank is required by law to keep a certain percentage of its total deposit in the form of reserve funds in its vaults and also a certain percentage with the central bank. Now CRR cash reserve ratio means this is the percentage of the total deposits that commercial banks are supposed to keep with the central bank as a reserve. And SLR on the other hand statutory liquidity ratio. It means that this is the percentage of the total deposit that commercial banks are supposed to maintain as a liquid, liquid assets with them SLR. So when prices are rising the central bank raises the reserve ratio. Okay, they increase is CRR, SLR and banks are required to keep more with the central bank. The reserves are reduced and they lend cash uh, less amount of money and the volume of investment, output and employment are adversely affected. Now in the opposite case when the reserve ratio is lowered, the reserves of commercial banks are raised, they lend more and the economic activity is favorably uh, you know affected in the economy. Now I just give one example here. Now suppose for example if RBI increases the SLR rate. Now if RBI increases the SLR rate it means that uh, commercial banks are supposed to maintain more reserves with them as a liquid asset so that they can lend less amount of money. Okay, So this is done in case when there is inflation in the economy and government wants to control the demand, they want to control the money supply in the economy. Another method is the selective credit control. Selective credit control are used to influence you know specific types of credit for particular purposes. They usually take the form of changing margin requirement to control you know speculative activities within the economy. When there is a brisk speculative activity in the economy or in the particular sector in certain commodities and prices start rising, the central bank raises the margin requirement on them. So the basic instrument in this is like change in the margin requirement or selective credit control or moral suasion. But in addition to this, the central bank uses a margin standing facility that is MSF liquidity adjustment facility corridor market stabilization scheme to control and regulate money supply in the economy. Now if you see the at present rates in the economy then uh, reserve repo rate is 3.35 percent now, a marginal standing facility rate is 5.15, bank rate is 5.15 percent, CRR is 4.5 percent and SLR is 18 percent in the economy at present. These are the present rates. Now marginal standing facility is a facility under which you know scheduled commercial bank can borrow additional amount of overnight money from the reserve bank by dipping into their statutory liquidity ratio that is SLR portfolio up to a limit at a panel rate of interest. Now this provides a safety valve against unanticipated liquidity shocks to the banking system. Then there is LAF system also it consists of overnight as well as the term repo auctions and progressively the reserve bank has increased the proportion of liquidity injected under fine tuning variable rate repo auction of the tenders. Okay, so in conclusion we can say that uh, monetary policy is very very important for any economy okay instruments are very important and it plays a prominent role in the development of a country it's a kind of double edged sword if money is not available in the market as a requirement of the economy the invent investors will suffer and on the other hand if money is supplied more than its uh, you know requirement then the poor section of the country will suffer because the prices of essential commodities will start rising but still you know it plays a very very important role and it's a very very important policy in the hands of any government. So thank you so much for your patience you know hearing for this lecture and we will meet again. Thank you.